Today we have an interesting problem. And what's really interesting here is not the way we're going to solve this problem, but how we're going to analyze the solution. Because we have to be very careful when we find solution to make sure the solutions we find are actually the solutions of the geometrical problem. We have a circle here, and we also have this black square here, O, A, B, C. O is the center of the circle. And we have a point D on the circle somewhere. And we know that AD is 2, CD is 3, and we ask about the length of the segment BD. There are different ways we can solve this problem. One way we can easily see this angle ADC is an inscribed angle. And the inscribed angle theorem tells us that inscribed angle has a measure which is half of the measure of the corresponding central angle. And the corresponding central angle is this angle right here. This is the angle of 180 plus 90 degrees to 170 degrees. And that means the angle ADC is 135 degrees, half of that. And then we can invoke, for example, law of cosines. We know side AD, we know side CD, we can find cosine of 135 degrees, it's not a big issue, and that allows us to find the length AC, diagonal of the square. And diagonal of the square is radius times square root of 2, so that gives us the radius. Radius is not everything we need to know. We need to find the side BD, so radius may be involved into that, but there are some other things we need to find. Now, I'm not going to go into details about inscribed angle or uh, inscribed angle theorem or law of cosines because I'm not going to go that way to solve this problem. If you don't know those facts and you're interested, I left links where you can find more information. So, how can we solve this problem? What I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a horizontal line ED and a vertical line DF. And I'm going to call OF as X, and by the way, ED is also X. And I'm going to call OE as Y, and DF is also going to be Y. If I call radius of the circle as R, in this case, OC is R, or F is X, that means that CF is R minus X. In a similar manner, we can find that AE is R minus Y. And now what we can do, we can extend this side ED until it hits BC. We get the segment DG, which is going to be also R minus X. The segment BG is R minus Y. And now we can find BD using Pythagorean theorem for the right triangle BDG. And from that theorem, we find that BD squared equals to this expression. Now let's look at the right triangle FDC and DAE and apply Pythagorean theorem to those triangles. So for the triangle FDC, we know CD is 3, CF is R minus X, and DF is Y. So if we apply Pythagorean theorem, that's the expression we're going to get. In a similar manner, if you look at the triangle ADE, we can apply Pythagorean theorem there, and we'll get this expression. We got these two equations, and what we're going to do now, we're going to add them up. And if we add them up, this is what we're going to get. Notice this two first terms on the right-hand side is BD squared. That's what we need. We will figure out what BD squared is if we find what X squared plus Y squared is. To find what X squared plus Y squared is, look at the rectangle OEDF. X is one side of this rectangle. Y is another side of this rectangle, and X squared plus Y squared will be actually square of the diagonal of this rectangle. 
for example, OD. But OD is the radius. Therefore, we see that x squared plus y squared equals to r squared. And from that, we get expression for BD squared. So we will find BD squared if you find r squared. Now, one way to find r squared is by a technique I described before when we use inscribed angle ADC and apply law of cosines, for example. But let's do something else here. Let's just handle this using the equations we already have. We have this equation, we have this equation, and we also have a third equation, which is not written here, but that's equation that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. In this case, we're going to have three equations, three unknowns, and we can solve that problem. So let's start with this equation, and let's open the parentheses here. If we do, this is the equation we're going to get. Notice we have x squared plus y squared here. We know it's r squared. So we can rewrite this equation like this. And rearranging the terms, we get expression for 2rx. In a similar manner, if we take this equation, we're going to get expression like this for 2ry. Now, Remember that x squared plus y squared equal to r squared. We can get rid of x and y here by squaring each of these expressions and adding them together. That's what we're going to get. Now we know x squared plus y squared is r squared. We're going to plug it in, open the parentheses, and get equation like this. This is a quartic equation for r but also it is a quadratic equation for r squared, which we know how to solve. And if you use the formula for quadratic equation, you'll find that r squared should be equal to this. And there are actually two solutions. And the both solution seems to be working fine because both solutions are positive. So and if you plug this r squared into this formula, we get that bd squared should be equal to this. And that seems to be the final solution. We have actually not one solution, but two solutions. And here we should ask ourselves a simple question. Do we really have two solutions here? Well, in general, if you're solving geometrical problems in certain circumstances, yes, you can have several solutions. But is this the case right here or not? Remember our initial conversation about inscribed angle theorem. And in that conversation, we said that this angle ADC is 135 degrees. And now notice that if I look at the triangle ADC, so imagine there is a segment AC drawn here. So we have a triangle ADC. In that triangle, I know two sides, and I know the angle between them. And that is really a triangle congruency criterion. That criterion says that if I know two sides and angle between them, any triangles that I'm going to create of that kind are going to be congruent to each other. It means that there is only one unique triangle that you can generate if you know two sides and an angle between them. And that means that there's unique AC which I can generate. That is, he has a unique length. And since AC is the diagonal of the square with the side equals to the radius of the circle, AC will be radius times square root of 2. And that should be unique. And that means that radius should be unique. And here I got two values. So what it means is that one of those values is wrong. One value shouldn't be here. But somehow we got it here. So what went wrong? What we need to do here is to simply see how we got this answer. Well, there's two answers. We got them from this equation. How did we get this equation? Well, we took these two equations, squared them, and added together. And that's really where the problem started. We should always be careful when we square equations. 
because we should remember that when you square equations, you potentially generating extra solutions, which will be solutions of the squared equation, but they were not solutions of the original equations. So how do we know which solution of this is right and which one is wrong? So obviously we can apply law of cosines here and find which one is right, which one is wrong. But we should be able to do it by just looking at the system of the equations we have. And to see which one is right, which one is wrong, we could actually take this R square and plug right here. So we can calculate 2 R square minus 9. And what we quickly find out that the solution with the minus sign here makes 2 R square minus 9 negative. But if you look at the left-hand side, we have 2 times r times x. Everything's positive. So it is an impossible thing to get a negative answer. And that will tell you that this minus sign is wrong, and we should throw it away. And the only right solution is with the plus sign and with the minus sign here. And that is our final answer. But the moral of the story is you should always check your solutions, if especially if you get a multiple solutions, to see that they actually all work.